God bless you. Susan Waldrop here. It is 11, 17, 16, 11, 17, 16, November 17, 2016. I pray that you're having a good day. The Holy Spirit put something on my heart this morning that might be a little controversial. And I just leave these things with the Lord because I thank God that he does speak to us and that we are we sometimes will step out and we will say something that everybody not, might not agree with, but it is important that we have freedom of speech, that all Americans have freedom of speech. This is so very, very important. And this is what I feel has been uh, happening with a lot of Americans that we have not had the freedom of speech, especially many of the religious leaders and all nonprofits have had their mouths shut by government for several years. And praise God, President elect Donald Trump is said, has said he is going to change that. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We lift up our oil before you. We ask you to anoint us, appoint us, send us, Father. Keep us on your mission. Keep us listening to you, Father God, speaking your truths with your wisdom, with your wisdom in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Big thing. I wanted to sort of just highlight a couple of articles and actually uh, this was spurred this uh, feeling led of the Lord to speak about this. Actually, I have read a couple of comments. I've sort of lifted the ban, if you want to call it that, uh, where you you know I have to go in and approve comments because it's the ministry is becoming very busy and blessed by God, and I just don't have a lot of time to sit and all day maintain this whole thing. And I have left it really in God's hands. And I know that there's going to be some negative comments, some positive comments. That is our freedom of speech in operation. But also, if I see foul language, I will delete those comments and things that are like what I would consider uh, just uh, really uh, pessimistic and negative and coming out um, in anger kind of comments where people are just, you know, there's there's no love, there's no fruit of the spirit you can see, then I don't feel that those things are healthy for all of us as people that come to this channel, Susan Waldrop Ministries on YouTube, and you're looking for something positive because that is what this channel is about, all positiveness. It's about encouraging you to have your personal relationship with the Lord above all. And uh, we know that the enemy likes to come in and he'll come in through other believers because it never fails how the believers want to crucify their own kind. It, it just is amazing to me. I've worked in the secular business. I've worked in the religious business, if you want to call it that. And I've seen a whole lot and I have been very grieved by what I've seen many times more in the religious field than in the secular field. And a dear friend of mine, uh, many years that mixed our album, that uh, was a couple of brothers in the Lord, that the Lord put our children actually together in a private Christian school. That's how we got to know these people. Uh, they wanted to mix our album for free because they said, you guys are really of the Lord. And they felt you know, these people, you couldn't even afford to hire them. We couldn't. And so we were very thankful and humbled by that. And um, anyway, they said to me, it's easier to work for the secular field media than the religious field, because the religious field, they're so uh, double forked tongue. You don't know what to believe, what's going on. And many of them stand uh, using the gospel uh, scripture to twist it, to uh, say things that it has no definition of in the name of Jesus. We just come up against all of that. Those false spirits is what they are. Antichrist spirits using, have a form of godliness, but denying the power within. And I am a firm believer that the rapture is coming. I know that we differ on that, some of us, but I have the freedom, thank God, to voice my opinion and my beliefs. And if you don't like what I say, you don't uh, agree with uh, what I say, or you're, you're feeling like you want to police me, <laughs> 
I would say, as someone said to me when I went in a church and said, gee, this is really a nice crowd. And somebody said, well, if you want a crowd, if you want to speak, you know, what the Lord puts on your heart, and it's not that we're wanting a crowd, I should retract that. That's that isn't the right words. My words are all coming up, mixed up. I just want to say, you need to get your own channel, be your own voice. Don't try to police the whole world unless you think that is your personal job. And then if you think you're a policeman, do it in love. You know, Donald Trump just fed the police in, uh, I think it was New York. I thought that was so wonderful. He fed the police and he had gourmet meals. It wasn't TV dinners. It was gourmet meals. This man is just amazing me. I mean, you know, there are a lot of rough edges. I don't care about some things, but there are some things he's doing and he's saying he's wanting to do that I am so thankful, thankful that we have now, for the first time in a long time, someone I see that is going to take the chains off of the church. The church has been chained. Their voice has been chained. And many, you know, uh, whether or not we see these preachers like uh, Pastor Paul Bigley, who I have a lot of respect for, he does speak out politically a lot. In fact, that is sort of his platform. If you see, he, he, say, I, he says, I take the Bible with the political, you know, he mixes all of that together. I'm not saying it exactly right. You know what I'm saying, those of you that have watched his videos. So, um, but the law has been that we were not to speak uh, about, and not just the evangelicals, the church, the clergy, but any nonprofit, but this was uh, is not so has not been allowed to say anything, you know, about the political realm for sure. But uh, so I'll just read a couple of notes here. Thrilling Christian conservative audience, because people have asked me, Susan, why are you mixing politics with Christian, with with the Bible? You know, that stick to the Bible. Yes, the Bible is my number one book. Even Donald Trump says the Bible is his number one book. I thank God for that. Thank you, Jesus. And um, I do have a personal opinion, and I am thankful that now it seems like we will have liberty to be able to voice our opinions. But I say this, I would never have an opinion that would be anti-Bible, and I try not to get on one tangent and stay, you know, only talking about the rapture because we want to focus on salvation. That is the number one thing. We want to enlighten ourselves with education because my people perish for the lack of knowledge. So the Bible, the Bible, the Bible is more important than anything, but we cannot shut our eyes to what's happening in the world because we don't want to have uh, enemies just come in and take us over, which is what they will do if you just close your eyes, stick your head in the ground and say, we're only going to talk about one thing because uh, we see so much happening in the world and we need to know how to pray. That's the reason God does expose things is so that we know how to pray better for each other and for a, a nation. And we need to stay current with what's happening. We need to always have our eyes wide open. Okay, thrilling Christian conservative audience, Trump vows to lift ban on po pol politicking, excuse me, I'm, I'm not all there with that, Politic, p, pol, politics ing, <laughs> politicking, appoint anti abortion, abortion judges, anti abortion judges. Basically, Donald Trump won a standing ovation from hundreds of Christian conservatives who came to New York on Tuesday with somewhat skeptical but willing attitude toward a man who has divided their group with comments on women, immigrants, and Islam. In his comments, the presumptive GOP presidential nominee said he would end the decades old ban on tax exempt groups, including churches, politicking called religious liberty, the number one question and promised to appoint anti-abortion Supreme Court justices. I think maybe that will be my greatest contribution to Christianity and other religions is to allow you, when you talk 
religious liberty to go and speak openly. And if you like somebody or want somebody to represent you, you should have the right to do it. Trump said, thank you, Jesus. A ban was put in place then, by then U.S. Senator Lyndon Johnson on tax-exempt groups making explicit political endorsements. Religious leaders in America today, Trump said, are petrified. It's so true because you can just have your license revoked. If you are licensed with the IRS, that is, if you are an actual ministry that is legally licensed as a nonprofit, and this is not just for the religious field, but this is for any, any nonprofit status, any nonprofit status. So many people have chosen to just not be with the IRS. They've said, no, you're, you, you, if you make a donation to this group, this ministry, there is no tax refund that you're going to get. You can't claim on your IRS that you gave a donation. This ministry, Miracle Ministries, and Susan Waldrop Ministries was initiated as an association, a church ministry in a home we met for a long time. And now we are, a, we are an association. That means we are ministers. We are licensed ministers. There are several ministry ministers under Miracle Ministries that we formed many years ago. And Stephen and I, God used us to initiate it with Pastor uh, Reverend Jim Williams of uh, the Little Brown Church, who was actually a Baptist minister for many, many years. So my roots are very conservative, conservative. And before we formed Miracle Ministries, we were licensed under the Assembly of God International Fellowship, Ted Lanes of San Diego, with our pastor, Pastor Robert Bloom of the Village Church of New Hall, California. There you have it. I am legal as the day is long, and I have been, and I have to account to a lot of people. I have to take this very seriously. And that's why I have been very, very hesitant to speak out anything because I am thankful that the Lord led us this way, but I have to also be very careful. Paul Bigley has been, in my opinion, sort of on the borderline there talking a lot about politics and, and that kind of thing. And I just pray for him. I give him kudos because he's really out there on a limb, but he's doing what God told him to do. So even when you're doing something that the government says isn't really legal to do, if you're walking in God's favor, God will make a way where there seems no way and you will walk in favor. So basically when Trump says he wants to expand religious freedom, he does. Uh, this Well, this one article is a little whacked out that I'm looking at now. It says uh, the audience, uh, I'm going to go to another article here because some of the things in this one article I don't, I don't agree with. Trump is surrounding himself with evangelical pastors. The Republican appointed an executive advisory board that's a who's who of conservative Christian leaders. <clears throat> now this right here tells me that he is for, Trump is for, religious leaders speaking their political opinions to him. Now, this is, of course, in a uh, meetings that he's going to be having with them. Thank God there are two women on the list. Yes, he is taking advice from two women. Uh, <clears throat> the one is, uh, let me see, the one lady is the girl that has a minister that has a, a has a, a suite in the Trump Towers, and uh, she has blonde hair. You know who I'm talking about. I can't, forgive me, God, I can't think right now. Paula White. The other one is uh, <clears throat> a lady that, uh, Bachman. So she is another one. But I just want to say, I think this is wonderful. I think it's a breakthrough, but I think it's, it's for an appointed time. James Dobson is on it. You know, all of these people. So you can see Trump is lifting up the gospel. Thank you, Jesus. And he's also taking the chains, just like yesterday, I talked about how God is taking the chains off of us and they're going to be falling off all of these chains. And he is going to open the prison doors. The church has been in prison. 
I say for a long time, it is important that we do what God tells us to do. Because in doing that, you're going to fulfill his perfect will for your life. This just is one little area, the church, the ministers. Yes, they do speak to many. Yes, they influence many. But can you imagine if all of these ministers never said anything about their opinion? They just stuck to the Bible and they let people, well, yeah, if everybody on the planet prayed to God and had a relationship with God, there would not be any problems, I could imagine. But everybody isn't that way. We can pray as a body that people come to Christ. That is the very first thing that they need to just come to Christ, get baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then God will lead them individually, hopefully, to some mentor that they will be able to to sit under and <clears throat> excuse me, learn from them. So a lot of things is changing and I have been very hesitant to speak out, speak out, but times are changing. I saw 2017 is going to be a wonderful year. I'm going to stay positive with it. I did see that there is going to be a right turn also for many people, <clears throat> things that you've been sort of like planning on, all of a sudden, some uh, little um, thing is going to happen and it's going to get shifted left, shifted right. And it's going to be like I was praying with the brother the other night and he's on a major, major global production. And I was praying with him. And this is a very uh, secular thing, but it's a very influential, important thing that is being put together. And I saw a pull, uh, I saw a, a right angle because it looked like it was going to look like one picture. And then all of a sudden, in my spirit, during the day, I was getting, you know what, I think something's going to happen there. But it didn't say anything because I didn't want to be negative because we want to stay positive. But he called me that night that the Lord was showing me that. And he said, you know what, <clears throat> this and that, and that's happening. And right away in my spirit, I said, uh-huh, uh-huh, that's what that was. That was the Lord showing me during the daytime, there's going to be a right angle. And he says, Susan, everything you said in the broadcast the other day, lined up, set it up for what I'm receiving now that is actually happening that he wasn't even planning on. But God is doing right angles. But I said, you know, God is uh, specifically using this person actually to bring salvation into mainline, mainline, if that's the right word, people in the world. A-list people. And when I say A-list people, some people don't understand what that means. If you work professionally in the entertainment industry, just using that as an example, there's A-list, B-list, and C-list, sort of like you look at movies, okay? When I <clears throat> was with uh, an international organization and I was honored to judge, I learned from Jimmy Baker, who was on the executive board of ABC National Television for over 50 years. So I learned what real production value which a lot of people have no clue what even production value means. Production value means that you look at you look at a piece, whether it's a published written piece like a newspaper article or a book, published works on paper, or if it's a, a video, an independent production, which a lot of times we'll see these short films, you know, those kind of things, or it's independently distributed. Then you see the next level, you know, and it goes on to movies, you know, television shows, these kind of things. Then you see international productions on an international level. So these are all different things that are on different levels that are produced. So when I say A-list, I'm saying the most influential classification of a production. And so... Um, Anyway, all of that, I just want to tell you guys that this is what I'm seeing in 2017, that we're going to see a lot of things open up for us as believers. This is encouraging. We need to stay encouraged, stay positive, no matter what we see, 
Because sometimes, even when a thing looks a little bit negative, like, oh, I don't know why that happened, we're going to see it positively, that God knows the full picture of why that thing happened in your life. And I want to say, I really did see in next year, in 2017, we're going to see surprises big surprises. This thing with Trump is a big surprise to me. It was like, wow, this has been in place since the 60s that Lyndon Johnson put this. He put the lock on the mouth of the church since the 60s. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the freedom? We're going to be able to speak. And so I want to say to the church to try to find your peace with God and do what God has called you to do. That is number one. If you feel like you are called to be a, 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 a policing kind of position where you're you know, judging this and judging that and t telling people what to do, I wanna say do it in love. We need to be able to work together. We need to always walk in love, but we need to always be like a willow tree. We need to yield with each other and say and say to ourselves, you know what? I don't understand all of that, but I know the call of God on that person, and I know that they're in God's will. Even though I don't understand this, I don't understand that totally. Yet God gives me peace. See, it's the it's the peace inside of yourself. God will out of the mouths of two or more my word shall be established. Confirmation. My agenda is to get people saved. That's that's the only reason I am here, is to bring people to the Lord. But we do need to be aware of some negative things that are happening in the world so that we know how to pray. Some people have no clue even about chemtrails. I used to talk to people at the market when I would go there and I would say, you know, the chemtrails, and they'd go, what's that? People that, whether or not they were saved, I have no idea. All I know is, the majority of the public had no idea even about chemtrails for many years. So, you know, we have to stay on top of things, but we need to walk in love together because we are a body. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 29. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular, members can't talk, in particular, particular. Now, this is King James Version. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. That's a huge spectrum of people. A lot of people are in that category. Because you see, we are a body. We need to work together. We need to bless each other. We need to not be so judgmental and jump on each other. Sometimes something is something we don't understand totally. We just need to love each other and let it go. Even if you're offended, like, like this brother I spoke with the other night, he says, wow, they just lashed out at me on the phone, this phone call that he got. He says, I don't understand. I, you know, it, it hurt his feelings. And I said, I understand that. But I said, don't take it personally because it is a spiritual thing that is bigger than you. And you got to know that the devil does not want God's will for your life to happen. I want to let that apply to whosoever hears that right now. Don't be offended. Don't take it personal because just let it go off your shoulders because it's a spiritual thing anyway. It's a spiritual demon trying to stop God's will for your life in whatsoever way. Okay, let's read down now a couple things I wanted to share. Uh, dear sister, I believe it is from India. Forgive me with these names. I'm terrible. I feel awful. I can't pronounce it, all these names. I'm so glad that I subscribed to you. I did so just three days ago back and through all things happening around me, I know God is asking me to choose who I'll marry. Thanks for causing an awakening. Thanks for, thank you for causing an awakening in me. 
I'm from India. And she said that she wants to become involved and support the ministry. So I just say thank you, Father God. And um, any questions, you can always find the ministry information at susanwaldrup.org. And there are uh, that ministry, I mean, that ministry, that website is because it's in process of being updated. There's a lot of new things that I'm going to be putting on it that I want to bring it up to par, up to date, because uh, we haven't had a lot of time to stay up with it. Okay, another one comes from Z E L L I E. Hana, please pray that Hana is freed from oppression whom Satan hath bound. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we lift up our oil and we speak, Father God, that you would free up Hana. We speak to the foul, unclean spirits and we adjure you in the name of Jesus. We say, leave Hana in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Leave Hana now. Francis, Francis says, you have a beautiful heart, Susan. I am a silent viewer because I try to keep up with a lot of various postings and I don't always find time to comment, but I enjoy your spirit and your dedication to the Lord. Thank you, Father God, for Francis. We ask that you just bless Francis in the name of Jesus with everything Francis needs this day. Bless her family, Father God. Bring her family, the members, Father, that need to know you closer, need to come in, need to get baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. Bring them in, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Anne writes, why are your broadcasts becoming more and more political? I was praying that this will somehow speak to you, Anne, and you will understand. You know, sometimes people come in anger, and I try to, like someone uh, said something the other day on the, I can't remember what it was, and I, you know, your first reaction is, you want to just, you know, come up against them like this. And, and the Lord corrects you and says, no, you need to walk in love. You need to explain yourself a little bit and walk in love. It's not always good to just ignore these comments because we are to be a body, just like we'll say the Republicans, the Democrats, they're totally on many issues, very different, but I, you know, whether or not Obama is serious about what he's saying, he's saying in front of the camera, we need to come together and we need to let this transition happen with Trump now taking the reins. I'm just praying that all of this goes smoothly. Ron writes, pray for my son. He was diagnosed with autism. Thank you, Father God, for Ron's son. We ask that you heal him, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Heal Ron's son, Holy Spirit. You know, it's so wonderful, the Holy Spirit. I see the Holy Spirit with everything I've read, everything I've ever learned, everything I've ever prayed. The Holy Spirit, I believe, just says, he repeats what he hears the Father say. So you see, we come to the Father in the name of Jesus. We pray to the Father, but I feel it's wrong to not acknowledge the Holy Spirit because he is part of the Trinity. So I incorporate all of them in my prayer. So if you don't understand the way I pray sometimes, I'm sorry. I do it from my heart. And I know God understands that. And I know God honors that. The words don't always come out perfect, but God sees the heart. In the name of Jesus, we're just gonna believe you, Lord, that you're doing this. Praise report from Luann. Thank you for praying. My son is home. Charges were dropped. He is back on track. Thank you, Jesus. I'm getting revelation into more ways God can change people that I didn't see hope for before. 
need more revelation. Father, we pray that you give Luann more revelation, Lord. You're so wonderful, Father. We stand with Luann. We ask that you open up the windows of heaven, pour out your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, Father, into her heart, her mind, so that she knows how to pray. We know how to pray better for this precious family. In the name of Jesus. Hi, Susan. I was wondering if you could continue praying for the strike to end at the university I attend. This is Amanda. She's a young girl that's a college student. And so she's had a lot of, there's been a lot of, you know, awful things happening. She said, I, the union leaders are very stubborn. They are not willing to take any offer that the university offers them. They say that they care about students, but they don't. So many students are getting frustrated with this strike and wish that it would end. Thank you, Father God. She says, I was hoping to graduate in February, but now I don't know if that is going, is even going to happen. Please keep praying that all enemy strongholds will be broken off that university. In the name of Jesus, we agree with Amanda, Father God, and that God will soften the hearts of the union leaders. We pray, Father God, with Amanda's own words, that so be it, and their members also, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we agree. Also pray that my emotional and physical health will improve. We agree with Amanda for that one, Father God. The stress has been causing my uh, enzema, eczema, to flare up. We pray for Amanda, Father God, total health, and for this situation in the university to stop all evil intentions. Stop. Stop in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Susan. Uh, K.A. writes, thank you, Susan, for all you do and share. I'm really discouraged about 2017. A lot of people are extremely depressed. You know, it's like we're all running this way, a lot of people. So I pray that these videos are uplifting to you, that they encourage you back, that God has never left you. He will certainly bring his perfect plan for your life to come to pass in the name of Jesus. She says, today is the day my daddy died. Maybe that's part of my sadness. Father, we pray for this precious one in the name of Jesus, that you would give her, I, uh, assuming her, sweet sleep in the name of Jesus. Peace, Father God, over the father that, her father that has gone on. We pray to be with you, Lord God. Bless this one now, we pray your precious blood over her life. And Father, for everyone else that needs a healing right now in the name of Jesus, we agree as a body, you are healing them now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, and consider it done. Thank you, Father, for all the donations that have come to this ministry, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask that you bless them back 1,000 fold. Thank you for all the prayer warriors. Father, answer their prayers in the name of Jesus on everything they have put on the table before you. We thank you. We give you all the glory. You get all the praise, Father God. And we ask you to bless us. Give us favor this day in the midst of our storm. Help us to accomplish everything you want us to accomplish this day, we pray. In Jesus' name, a lot of things are happening with the ministry, and so I ask for your prayers that God will lead me and he will guide me because I'm hoping to mix a couple little different type of uh, extensions of the ministry that will be a blessing to people. Also, there has been a door that uh, the ministry, we may be uh, ministering on a physical level in the Southern California area on a monthly basis. So I ask for your prayers that that will come through so that we will be able to physically be available for you in Jesus' name to pray with you and that we will also be able to videotape these meetings 
so that you can partake that way. In the name of Jesus, I love you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Jesus is the answer. We must believe that he has saved the best for last. Otherwise, why serve a God that never answers anything? Why serve a God that there's no hope of salvation for? So we will choose the positive of these choices. We will choose to believe he is a rewarder of those that diligently serve him. So we stay diligent. We stay thankful for his faithfulness with us. I love you. Have a blessed Thursday in the Lord. Shower blessings, come on and make it clear.